So there are Bust, and then there's Paxton Lynch, because he's one of the more unique draft bust in the quarterback position we've ever seen and that he barely ever played in the NFL. He only had 128 pass attempts, despite the fact that he was a first round pick from the Denver Broncos. So let's talk about why he ended up getting selected and also, you know, what went wrong, why it didn't work out in the NFL to the point where they basically never even gave him a chance. So we'll start off here with his strengths. And it's worth mentioning that, you know, Yes, he was a first round pick. He was picked with the 26th overall pick, so it's a little bit down there, but still one pick ahead of Kenny Clark, who's been really good for the Green Bay Packers. But anyways, uh, you see the strengths, you know, strong arm can make all the throws, great size, which is, you know, the height, that's a big thing. It's sort of the main reason why it's a meme that John Elway always drafted tall quarterbacks was largely because of Paxton Lynch. He's six seven, so that's a big thing. Also good mobility. He's athletic, can throw a beautiful deep ball. So, you know, kind of a lot of this stuff is about the same, you know, and then, then there's some other things like, you know, hand size, toughness, uh, which, you know, I don't really pay too much attention to that because it doesn't seem to matter too much, but those are factors as well in his strikes column should be mentioned. This is from Walter football and this is before he was drafted. So they don't have the luxury of seeing how it worked out in the NFL. Their weaknesses were that he's raw and streaky as a passer, inconsistent field vision has to quicken the process, uh, can be slow to work through his progressions. So a lot of this kind of stuff. And I guess uh, questions about off the field maturity and professionalism again, don't pay too much attention to that stuff. But basically, it's, you know, uh, he was streaky, which, you know, had some consistency issues and also wasn't necessarily the best and kind of took a little bit long to make his decision, which you do see on tape, like right here. So this is going to be a zone coverage play. The way it works for Memphis, which that's the team that uh, Paxton Lynch is on, the way it works for Memphis is you have a receiver who kind of runs further deep and that tries, to, hopefully that'll get the BGSU defender further deep as well. You then have another player who kind of runs, you know, just follows where he goes. Hopefully there will be some clearing and you can get some separation here. And watch how right when this play starts, uh, you notice that there's like a couple of fakes and you see that there's an opening right here. So if you can fire this one, it can be complete. And this is one that you basically expect an NFL quarterback to make. However, I'm going to talk about a couple of negatives on this play. You're going to see really two main things. One is going to be the accuracy, but the other is going to be, your, watch his throwing motion. I, I want to make sure you see this before I play, show the play. Watch how he throws it. As you see, it's very much just you, very much arm dependent, right? Not getting his legs into it that much. And the ball doesn't go very far. And I think that the sort of the wonky throwing mechanics can kind of result in a lot of ways of him not being able to make you know these accurate passes consistently. And that's what led to some inconsistent accuracy because, I mean, he got nowhere near enough uh, you know, arm strength on that one. And we know he does have the arm strength. I mean, like watch right here. This is a great example of arm strength. So the way it works is it's actually going to be kind of a trick play where, you know, he's going to hand the ball off, but get the ball back. Like, I mean, watch as you see, uh, you know, gives the handoff, but then it's going to be a pitch back to him eventually. And he's going to throw it. And I'm pausing it here just to show where he is on the field. He's at his own 41 yard line, but look at how far he's going to throw it. I mean, look at this, just, you know, cannon of a throw. This is going to be well into the end zone. That was over 60 yards right there. It was wide open, but still accurate. So he does have just pure arm strength. The issue is just it was inconsistent. And a big part of that, I believe, was largely due to the fact that uh, it was his throwing mechanics. And then you do have something like this. So I'm going to just pause it right here. Your screen isn't broken. I've just paused it. And what's going to happen on this play, it's mainly I'm just going to talk about pocket presence because that's something that, you know, the Walter football brought up and a lot of people kind of overlook it and they say, ah, you can learn pocket presence. You know, that's something that you can get better at. But guys don't really get better at pocket presence. People who are have good pocket presence tend to always have good pocket presence. And people who struggle with that tend to always struggle at that. And Paxton Lynch did struggle at that in college. I mean, watch, there's going to be pressure up the middle and he somehow still never notices it until he's getting hit. It was relatively quick pressure. It was about three seconds. So it's not, I'm not going to kill him for getting sacked there. But the fact that he didn't even notice it, that's the what should have been discouraging to scouts. And I guess was for, you know, 25 teams who passed on him before Denver finally selected him. So now let's go to the NFL. And there is admittedly not a ton of tape we have to look at. Like I said, he you know basically played three games worth of snaps. So it's hard to really tell exactly uh, how good he is. But what's going to happen on this play is that it's going to be, you know, there's a go route towards the sideline. It's a cover two. Man, this play can work out, and it is going to work out. 
I mean, like, look, as you see, so right up, right when this play starts, this is as open as it gets in the NFL. It doesn't get much more open than this. And so most quarterbacks are like, okay, awesome. Perfect situation. However, you see uh, Paxton Lynch here just misses the throw. He wasn't accurate. And that's just a great example of some of Paxton Lynch's issues as a quarterback is he was just inconsistent. And even with these, you know, wide open guys, he wasn't able to make the throw. Like this one's another good example, I would say. So what's going to end up happening on this play is that it's going to be very simple. It's a man coverage play. There's a little route uh, underneath. This one, you know, might get open, might not. But watch what happens. So Lynch takes the snap, and you see that there is kind of this opening underneath. The reason for it is because Kansas City on this play, they were going for a switch, but it's going to take a little bit of time. And that's okay. You know, Lynch, he can just simply just, it's almost like a check down at this point, take some yards, move the ball down the field, the whole you can't go broke making a profit type thing. It's first and 10, get, you know, even further into field goal range, stuff like that. All this is good. But again, I'm going to talk about the, uh, you know, accuracy and also sort of the throwing motion and how he literally isn't going to move anything other than his arms on this play. I mean, watch him just, you know, get rid of it very quickly. And again, he kind of wants to get rid of it quicker in the NFL, but that, throw, you know, messes with his throwing motion and results in a bad throw. This is something I've talked about with Kyle Trask and a concern I have with Kyle Trask coming into the NFL is it's a very similar issue. And again, both of them kind of drafted later. I think the reason for it is because they'd say, hey, if we can fix him, it's a great quarterback, but it's just really difficult to fix someone like that. So, yeah, that's what I would say is the biggest issues. You know, there's other stuff you can talk about, but it's mostly that. It was mostly just the inconsistent accuracy, which was an issue in college, and it continued to be an issue in the NFL. So, usually these are like, why did all the scouts get it, you know, wrong? This time the scouts kind of did get it right. I mean, I don't hate the idea of a late first round pick on a player like Paxton Lynch, just simply because you sort of feel like maybe you can figure out a way to, you know, get him to fix this. Uh, we all, you know, the great example of this was the Josh Allen thing where he did fix his throwing mechanics. And I think Josh Allen had a lot more high highs in college than Lynch did, which is also why he went a lot earlier than Lynch did. But it's kind of that similar mindset of, can we fix some of these throwing mechanics and get him to, you know, fix the consistency well, in Lynch's case, you couldn't, and he ended up just being a bust, which, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, not everyone ends up putting it all together, and that's the case of Lynch. There's plenty of other stuff, but, you know, for this video, I wanted to mostly talk about that because I think that's a key trait. You know, how accurate you are at throwing the football, that's pretty important. Uh, if you can put the ball where you want to put it, that tends to be what matters, and Lynch just couldn't do that consistently enough to be in the NFL. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.